Thanks for joining us for another edition of The Small Business Show with Cheyenne Malone, exclusively on ASBN.com. Hi, everyone. I'm Cheyenne Malone. On today's show, we'll be talking talk triggers and how your business can use it to its advantage. We'll explain. Don't worry. Hold tight. We're pleased to welcome back Jay Baer, who is an author, advisor, a Hall of Fame keynote speaker, and business growth and customer experience researcher. Uh, thanks so much for joining us again, Jay. Talk to us about talk triggers for those who aren't familiar with them. What are they? What do they mean? Cheyenne, I think everybody understands that word of mouth is an important way to gain and keep customers. I don't think that's big news, but it's probably more important than people even assume. More than half of all purchases are influenced by word of mouth in some way. However, despite that being true, almost every business of any size, shape, or description lacks an actual word of mouth strategy. We tend to just take it for granted. We think, well, you know, if we run a good business, people will naturally talk about us, right? Except that's not how people actually behave. We don't talk about good. I wouldn't be like, hey, Cheyenne, let me tell you about this thing that happened to me last night. It was perfectly adequate. <laughs> like nobody ever tells that story <laughs> because it's not a story. So a talk trigger is a strategic, proactive system that is designed specifically to create conversations amongst your customers and every business should have one. So how does it work? So what you wanna do is first understand that we ignore what's average and we discuss what's different, okay? So you have to understand that your talk trigger, the thing that people are going to chatter about is probably not your core product and service, okay? So your talk trigger is something that you do that customers don't expect. Because if they expect it, why would you tell other people about it? So I'll give you an example. There's a business in Sacramento called Skip's Kitchen, and they are a hamburger restaurant. There's lots of hamburger restaurants, of course. Uh, and they even have really good hamburgers, but there's a lot of people with good hamburgers. Skip's Kitchen, however, has a talk trigger. So the way it works is when you go in there, so menu kind of board, right? So as a counter service, you you walk in and you look above and it's like, I want a patty melt and fries and a you know chocolate shake. So after you order, but before you pay your money, the counter person whips out a deck of playing cards from under the counter and fans them out face down, like at a casino, and looks you right at the eye and says, Cheyenne, pick a card and you pick a card. And if you get a joker, your entire meal is free. Woohoo! It doesn't matter. Woo! It doesn't matter whether you're ordering for yourself or for like an entire like high school soccer team. Oh. Uh, and on average, four people a day win this game and they go crazy. But everybody talks about it because everybody gets a chance to play. If you look at the reviews for Skip's Kitchen on Google and Yelp and TripAdvisor, they always talk about this game. And in fact, in Sacramento, despite the notion they have a giant digital like neon sign out front that says Skip's Kitchen, in Sacramento, people tend to call it that Joker restaurant. Oh, wow. That's they awesome. Spent, in 12 years, Cheyenne, they have spent a grand total of zero dollars on advertising ever. And there's a line out the door every day. Because if you get this right, if you get your talk trigger right, it allows you to spend less on advertising and marketing because your customers will do that job for you. I love that. That's a great story and example. So Thanks. I would imagine, you know, there would be some, I don't know, challenges uh, mm -hmm. when you're trying to implement something like this. What are some common mistakes you see business making, you know, when they're trying to do implement this strategy of talk triggering? A lot of times they don't lean into something that is different enough to be talkable, right? So what I hear businesses say is, well, we offer really good customer service, so that should be our talk trigger. And I'm like, yeah, but like every business tries to offer really good customer service, and the only time somebody's going to experience your customer service is if something goes wrong. And that's one of the key tenets of the idea is that you want your talk trigger to be repeatable. And when I say that, what I mean, Cheyenne, is, is you want as many customers as possible to experience the differentiator. 
because then as many customers as possible can talk about it. So that's why when you go to Skip's Kitchen, everybody gets to play this game. It's not just on Wednesdays. It's not just on your birthday. It's not just for ladies night. It's every customer every time because they want everybody to be able to tell the tale. And, and what I hear a lot of businesses do, they're like, well, okay, let's do a special thing, but we're only going to do it for our biggest customers or for new customers or for some other segment of your customers. And you're much better off offering it to everybody because you want to maximize the number of conversations. Okay, so I like that example from a brick and mortar, but what about for mm -hmm. online businesses? Can you apply talk triggers to that? Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, in fact, I would say in some cases, it's actually even easier uh, to, to do so. Um, depending on on the business and, and how it's it's structured, so there used to be uh, a a B two B kind of phone company, like a digital uh, phone company that that you would use to make calling. Before folks tended to gravitate towards Zoom, I think they've now been purchased by Dialpad or, or one of the other companies, and and so they their talk trigger was when you connected your conference call. Uh, and again, this is a purely digital company, doesn't really exist in any meaningful way. Uh, when you connect to the conference call, they would have this hilarious on hold music. It was like this really, really funny song that their CEO, who was actually a musician, wrote. And it was all about the fact that you're on hold and people are late for the conference call. So then you think the call's not going to happen and you hang up and then you realize that they were just late. It's like this whole tale. <laughs> and that was their talk trigger. Like people would always, always, always reference it. People would just call in to conference calls they weren't even invited to just to listen to the on hold music, right? So you can absolutely make it happen regardless of what kind of business uh, you are. And I will say this, small businesses often have an easier time at this because operationally they can tweak their operations to launch a talk trigger faster than a big corporation can. If I'm watching right now and I'm a business owner, uh, what advice do you have for me to get started? Because those are great examples. They're super creative. Does it have yeah. to be something, you know, tailored to your current product and business or can you just go out of the box? Um, yes and no. Okay. So one of the, one of the tenets of the system and, and in the book talk triggers, it, it's broken down this way. There are, are four requirements of a talk trigger. So four things that must be true for it to work. There are five types of talk triggers. So you can be talkably fast, you can be talkably useful, you can be talkably irreverent, five types. And then there's a six step process in the book for how to do it. So it's a four, five, six, really, really usable system that anybody can implement. But, but to your point, um, you want it to be different enough that people don't expect it and therefore talk about it. But it has to make sense contextually in terms of who you are and, and what you're about. It, you know, the, the thing about a talk trigger is you're trying to create conversation every day forever at, at sort of a meaningful level. It's not the same. In fact, it's in some cases the opposite of going viral, right? Sure. So people say, I want word of mouth. So I'm gonna rent an elephant. I'm gonna put our logo on its flanks. I'm gonna march it down Main Street. That'll create conversation. And yeah, it will. But people will say, why does the insurance company have a logo on the elephant? Like, it's too weird, right? So there, there's a happy medium there between being weird enough to be different, but not so weird that it doesn't make any sense in context. So how could you take that same example and make it better? So what you would want to do in a circumstance like that, like a good example for an insurance company is, and I actually worked on this program, um, uh, you've got kids, Cheyenne, and so youth sports, big deal. And people's kids are playing basketball, there's soccer, you know, what all the different activities, baseball. And especially now with the decline of, of local print journalism, there's never any coverage of those sports like they used to be. Sure. You know, none. So nobody knows like what's going on in, in you know, Little League. So I taught some insurance agencies to do this. They just got an intern who sends an email every Monday morning to the Little League, to the Soccer League, to the Football League, to the Pop Warner, whatever, and gets the game scores. And then the insurance company publishes a Monday night newsletter of all the local sports scores and highlights. Oh, that's awesome. And all it costs them is the time of an intern. And every parent in town is like, this is the greatest thing ever. 
they're that's talking nice. about being the reliable local insurance provider, right? And that's what people talk about. They're not going to talk about insurance because insurance is insurance, right? I mean, yeah. what, what conversation are you going to have about that? But they'll definitely talk about sports scores and the fact that the insurance company gave it to them. I like it. Jay, any uh, final thoughts for us before we say goodbye? You just first and foremost have to understand that, that word of mouth is even more important to your business than you think. Mm -hmm. And then consider this, for something so important, why do you not do it strategically and proactively? Why don't you actually have a word of mouth plan? And don't feel bad that you don't, because Cheyenne, you ready to have your mind blown? Mm -hmm. Fewer than 1% of all businesses have an actual word of mouth strategy or a wow. talk trigger. So it's a massive opportunity to do this because your competition probably won't and start getting those conversations that your business deserves. It makes sense because like you said, just because you're a good company, not everyone, even if they've had great experiences, that's is what the going money to is share. For. <laughs> they expect you to be a good company. That's why they paid you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Awesome. Yeah. Well said. Great advice. Jay Thanks Bear, author, advisor, speaker, and Customer experience researcher, thanks so much. You know your stuff. I appreciate having See you, you next on the show. Time. Thanks for joining us for another edition of The Small Business Show with Cheyenne Malone, exclusively on ASBN.com.